Back to Final Fantasy 15. I was going to say Let's Play Final Fantasy 15, but uh, is this a Let's Play? I don't know. I don't know. But we're live on the internet again, and I see an item. Nah, should we rest? Or should we just go see Closter in the middle of the night? I like that idea better. Goes with my whole Versus theme. By the way, new Versus outfit. Someone made the original outfit. Instead of the modified version. Well, this shit night looks awesome. A little bit of stuttering here and there, but look at that. Nice mod. The lighting right here. Now, hold up. I like this a lot. We're taking a picture. I prompt her to get out of the way, though. Okay, everyone. Come over here. Come on, guys. You gotta move. Especially you, Prompto. There we go. Okay, anyway. Moving on. The glorious power of Totomostro. It is upon us. But, uh, not really. The layout of Altish is kind of confusing, actually. <laughs> Whoa. Hitching up. I even turned the preview of my stream off to see if that would save on resources. Apparently, it's not doing jack. Oh, you know what it is. Hold on. I've got this open. And this open. Uh, what is this? I have a blank image open here. There we go. Alright, hopefully that helped. I had Camtasia open, which is my video editor. So I was probably taking some resources. I don't think that was open during the extra live stream. I wonder if something was just going wrong there. Go on, soldier. I am not afraid. Ah, uh, yes, the song that plays like once right here, and I don't know why. Thank you for coming. Alright, the negotiation is about to begin with First Secretary Colostra engaged in a matter befitting a king and strive to win her trust and cooperation. So I decided to extend my offer. Though circumstances have changed, both the king and the heir of Lee are finally in our town. You said that you have Luna in your care. Probably should like wore a tux to this or something, but oh well. Doesn't it pose a risk to your nation? Is the king concerned for our relations with the Empire? But it's true. The Oracle is a risk. One we are prepared to shoulder, whether we do so depends on you. Now, let me ask some questions of my own. Why did the Oracle seek to awaken the High World? She wants to forge a covenant so I can receive Leviathan's blessing. <laughs> the answer I wanted to hear, and yet, King or not, it can't be a simple affair for you to receive a god's blessing. Let me be frank. The potential chaos worries me. You know better than most what took place in Lucis with Arkin. Tell me, what happened? Uh, totally destroyed everything. There was a disaster. People died, probably. Uh, we probably almost would have died if not for Arden. You know, no big deal. I had Arden. I gave him his power. Just like the Lich has. Though the Empire doesn't like the way the story goes. Even as we speak, they mobilize their forces. It seems there's no avoiding chaos. So may as well get Leviathan, huh? Come to war. However, I don't care to host a battle on my soil. The gods and the Empire be damned. All 
Alright, uh, let's be concerned. Well, let's just cut to the chase here. Next the deal you want to make. Protective envelopes. Makes things that much easier when you can dispense with the facts. Without further ado, let us talk terms. If you wish to hold the right, you must ensure my citizens' safety and aid in their evacuation. Hell yeah. As long as the people's safety is assured, I have no qualms with your right. And that is not all. Once the right has begun, I will not be accountable for what follows. You are on your own. Hell yeah. Pardon me. You know how to take care of ourselves. Thank you. I'm sorry we cannot do more. But as I'm sure you are aware, few armies can stand against the might of the Imperial fleet. Lose this, sure couldn't. That is all to the terms. To review, you are to ensure our citizens' safety and engage the enemy. Do we have an agreement? Would have done that anyway. Allies, come together as allies. Allies? Such a vote of confidence. Well, you can trust us to do our part and keep the Oracle safe. A final warning. Though I doubt that I can do it. My duty is to my citizens. Should any harm befall them, there will be a reckoning for both King and Oracle. Hmm. Eh, will be nice. All right. You do what you must for your people. You're just like your father. Sometimes I can't tell where the wheat shop is going. <laughs> Good start. Assign three of your own for the evacuation effort. When you choose, it's up to you. Well, I've only got three. Until the Imperial fleet will be four warships strong. Steel yourselves for a full-scale battle. I'm glad we could talk. We can each act in our own interest to our mutual benefit. Woat. More coins, baby. More coins so I can get that ribbon. Oh, I should have bought a ribbon. Did I even check that guy's shop? I forget. I probably don't have enough ribbons anyway. Let's be honest. I can't promise something I can't have. Of course. You said you were provocative. Was it so long ago the last Enclave was taken from you? You've seen the Empire go mad with its tiny conquests. Probably thanks to a certain <coughs> someone, <coughs> Arden. <coughs> All right. And why can't I be on those cliffs? The Empire gets weak, relapse, and the last thing you want is going to be felt before loss before the king gives you your power. And we're three of us on evacuation detail. Indeed. Thanks to the new enlisted radiators to help the hygiene pump myself. What kind of help are you talking about? Just like Titan, the Empire will seek to immobilize your harpoon. Oh, with the harpoon things? If we can dislodge them from the goddess, she will have a fighting chance. Sounds good in theory, but don't push it. It's pointless, unless you can get that blessing. So get it. Stay alert. Well, I'll be there. Easy peasy. Hey, 
Hey, remember when we were in the Platinum demo and we were here and there's like whole cool, cool, uh, all kinds of cool magic spells we could cast? Yeah, me too. Hashtag not salty. Hashtag they all cast it differently and were fun to use though. If worse comes to worse, you can threaten to throw the Platinums into the sea. Then they'll listen. In the meantime, it will be right here. Better when you earn it for yourself. Understood? If your opponent is lucky, your memory will be under Imperial Watch. What? Think of it as a necessary evil in order to forge a covenant. Once it's over, you may go as you please, but you do so without our protection. Good night. You'd better be quiet. Your father is waiting. Cool badass shot of Luna pushing away gun. I've always been confused by that scene. I feel like it's just a relic of earlier trailers I decided to keep in because it's cool. People always questioned why the MTs act the way they do. With Luna, because they're like, well, clearly they're not going to kill her, so why are they pointing guns at her? If you go back and watch when they seize the regalia, they do exactly the same thing. So I think it's just their dumbass robot programming acting up. Dear friends, I stand before you today. With little hope the world I seek shall reach beyond these walls. For slowly but surely the light fades from our world. And as it does, the shadows shall loom ever longer until all succumbs to the darkness. Darkness that evokes terror, hatred and sorrow in the hearts of men. The ashes of Lucis, a dream of peace, twisted into a nightmare of death and destruction, claiming innumerable lives and leaving myriad souls to suffer. Yet I beg you, do not surrender to despair. Have faith, for our gods watch over us. By their blessings, by the stars that light the heavens above, our world will be delivered from the perils of the dark. I stand before you here in Alticia to call upon Leviathan, goddess of the seas, spirit of the deep. By the sacred rite, I will commune with the Hydrian. But first, I offer you my solemn vow. On my honor as Oracle, I will not rest until the darkness is banished from our world and the light is restored.
Let's do it, boys. I like that speech. Even if it is a tad bit on the JRPG cheese. I've heard there's a speech later on that was added to the Royal Edition that's similar in nature, and I'm like, uh, but I refer in judgment until I see it for myself. One of 15's best strengths, in my opinion, is how it completely avoids most of those tropes. Not all of them, and not always, but in general, it avoids them, which is nice. you enter into this covenant that the king might reclaim the stone ooh boy you're a big girl I know it's not really the place to be thinking about this, but uh, seeing how there's a bunch of town or a bunch of cities, houses, one of these days I'll get it, a bunch of houses that have been built around the spot where uh, Leviathan awakens, you gotta wonder, is the property value on that place really low? Probably, right? Which way? It's not this way, but is there an item? Item. Nope. Okay. Well, you can't say I didn't try. Cause those got those houses got to be destroyed quite often. Whoa, like that thing. Wow, that would be way cooler if I destroyed them instead of whiffing. Get utterly smoked. Anyway, moving on. Alright. Enough of this. You die. So I can murder your face. Now then, back to what I was trying to do. I know what you must know. That the King of Kings is to drive the darkness from our stars. single-handedly more badass than anything Luna's been in previously, including that gun scene. Yeah. 
I'm jumping, dude. Who? Now wait, son. You gotta be confident in the face of the horrible, murderous sea serpent, right? It's probably fine. Sure are big. Ah, not even a scratch on me. Totally fine. Probably. Ah, oh, yes, the good song. I still listen to the song. Every couple of days. It's on my phone. Really good. I should probably swap weapons, so. Take me up, Captain. She's a mean one. Not see you coming.
badass time. I like this part of the fight much better. Even though it's basically holding the butt to completely annihilate the Leviathan. It looks really cool. Anyways. Time to blow up stuff. You know, this boss fight is probably a shadow of what it could have been. But, I don't know. I still think it's pretty cool. And I don't know where all my sound effects went. Ah, oh, there we go. Still no sound effects. At least I have the power of the Royal Cascade. Uh, yeah, we're not dealing with that. This is far and away the most effective way to fight Leviathan, is literally to hold circle. Kind of wish there was more to the original, or the first phase of this fight, where I'm not Super Saiyan. Like, if it was a. Ooh, if the fight had a longer lead up or something. And it felt like I was doing work. Like I had to do work before stuff happened. I think there would be less complaining in general. Whoa, hello. But, with that, down goes Leviathan. More or less. Down into the spine. Okay, well, I guess you're not done yet, but... Also, knowing what Armager Unleashed is like, being in a world where Armager Unleashed exists, I think they did a lot more... or did a lot better of a job making Armager seem bloody awesome with Armager Unleashed than they did with the Super Saiyan form. Oh, this is a mash. Okay. I don't even have those royal arms yet. Easy money. It's not gonna do much. Unfortunately, Titan is basically a, just a dude in, ta in a, a toddler pool, kitty pool. Impressive arm reach to reach down past half his body in that ocean, though. Oh, 
Ini apa? Seperti sepatutnya aku lakukan. Aku melakukan ini Karena Percaya sama Tuhan Aku kumpulkan Kebaikan Tuhan percaya percintaan Bukan keluarga Bukan mereka Tuhan yang akan tolong kita Tuhan juga Berakhir cuma dengan doa Untuk kesembuhan Yang harus aku minta When I find myself alone in what the world does to me, what difficulty it is to know that I am valued. I'm valued to not be me all the time. I got an achievement. Thanks, game. One of my best friends is blind, and my bride to be died. But you know, I got that achievement. Man, 
I knew from the very second that Ignis's back was to the camera when Noctis woke up. I'm like, son of a bitch, he's blind. Like, that's the only reason they didn't show his face at the start. I'm like, oh, God. But then I didn't want to believe it. And then it happened. And then I'm like, ah. I was more sad for Ignis than Luna. Oh, whoops. There we go. Luna knew what she was getting into, and I mean, technically so did Ignis, but like, there was no chance in hell Luna thought she was ever surviving. She was prepared for this. Ignis still has to deal with the fact that, that he's a casualty more than he is like a, no way, like he's a martyr. He's not a martyr, he's, he's a casualty, I should say. Chapter 10, The Heart of a King. Across the water and onto the rails, the royal retinue makes for Gralia, the imperial capital. Their objective? Reclaiming the crystal that they might reclaim their homeland. However, the ring's weight proves too much for Noctis to bear. <sighs> but man, oh. Ignis is blind. It just hurts me so bad, man. And what they do with him later in this coming chapter hurts me real bad, too. Oh, God, okay. Oh. Question is, do I do the DLC now? Or do I wait until after? Hmm. Because mm -hmm. there's a specific instance at the end of this chapter that I'm not sure if it's better if we play the DLC first or play it second. I'm going to say we play it second. I'm going to say we do chapter 10 first. The Scourge of the Stars. Act 2, in all effectiveness, although I would have considered Alticia Act 2. I heard they added some quests to this chapter, now that I'm thinking about it. Some, like, photograph quests or something to the mines. We're gonna see how that plays out.
Yeah. Why do I not have control? Weird, it all tab me or something. All right. I know a lot of people think Gladio is an asshole for that scene. I do not agree. I think Gladio is trying to be a good friend. I can't remember quite now. Hopefully. I don't know. I can't remember exactly now. <laughs> but I want to say in Chapter 4 I talked about what I think Gladio's character is all about. How he prides duty above all else. How he takes offense when he perceives other people not doing their duty. And this is just that coming back around. The Oracle Lady Lunafreya of Tenebrae lost her life when her summoning of the Hydrian went terribly awry. Lady Lunafreya was swept under the Altissian waves alongside her fiancé, Crown Prince Noctis of Lucis. Despite falling unconscious for several days, the prince made a miraculous recovery and is currently being treated. So, also, it's been like several weeks, and Noctis' demeanor has not changed. Scientists have yet to provide a sound explanation as to why the resource-rich Fodina Castino has been overrun by an enormous tree. Some experts insist, however, this floral phenomenon may have been a paranormal prelude to the awakening and annihilation of the gods. I think that there shows that Gladia knows he's probably a little bit out of line. Even if he thinks he's in the right. He can't bear to look at Noctis, really. He swears. I think there's another newspaper to see. I can't remember, though. There's this high elixir. Alright, just the two. I'm not even quite sure that Lunafreya's body is still in the physical realm, to be honest. Wouldn't be surprised if, uh... The meeting in the spirit realm, or the beyond, or whatever that was, with the Scylla Blossom water thing. I wouldn't be surprised if her body's there now, considering the end of the game and how she shows up again. Without spoiling it too much. Yeah. 
You are one vicious woman. What if the guy's just hungry? I mean, I don't believe him either, but what if he's just hungry? I wonder what FIC stands for. We've got a meaning for the SAF on the side of the Imperial ships. I think they have a meaning for SIC. Quests. Alrighty. Well, did you find them? Definitely. And then the you monsters down there don't kill you first. They smell probably dead. Oh. Did you get something? No one knows this there. And I'm not risking my life going down to find out. If you want to risk yours though, then be my guest. The monsters down there don't kill you. Alright, alright, alright. I don't even remember if that guy was there originally, but Procto's got a quest for us. Man, there's a lot about the second half of the game that I forgot. I don't remember that call at all. There's an elevator that should take us straight down to the mine. I wonder if the king's inside. Probably. Well, those two went to grab a bite in that glorified dining car they call a restaurant. Yeah, I want the quest. Oh, there's a dude down here. Never agreed to help you. Hey, nice work, Noctis. Call them out. What you got here? Ten potions. Anything else super important? Not really. Oh, I think this guy sells us weapons. Yeah. That's quite a voice for a train conductor. The blood sword. Hmm. Unfortunately, I'm poor. I'll just steal this one here. Thank you. Let's go see what's up in the train car. No. No. Bound to happen at least once, huh? Choke him out! Come here! Your ass is grass. Gotcha. Are they all up here? I thought they were in the mines. Or I figured they would have been in the mines anyway. Hey, lore. Desolate district in the eastern reaches of the western continent. The railway that transects the Imperial territory still stops at this station, but few board the Magna Forcia at Cartanica these days. The elevated railroad platform offers an expansive view of the surrounding area. Retaining walls hold back soil on the Sakart mountain slopes, while gas and oil fields pepper the ground below. 
The famed Fodina Castino can also be seen from the station with an elevator providing direct access. Niflheim sought to recover and restore the magic technology of old as the key to ensuring the nation's future prosperity, but mass production of said magic technology required enormous quantities of oil and coal. Thus, the Empire set its sights on Cartanica, a once, lively, once lively town rife with natural fuels. After the Empire had its fill, however, the city was left a shell of its former self, drained of its resources, and devoid of human life. Oh my god. What is Kenny doing here? Give me that item. Alright, Kenny. What's your deal? Oh, right. This whole thing. No! No! I didn't realize Kenny was the... Oh. Oh, it makes me make a character. Alright. What kind of clothes do I have unlocked? Good old Galadian stuff. We'll just change the hair real quick. Get the basics right. Eh. Sure. Color. Let's see, hair. We're gonna go for. Man, these tips are not going to look good no matter what I do, huh? Eh, that's fine. Alright. That's what this avatar looks like. I'm going to call you... Hmm. I'm going to call you... Buxpin. What in the hell? Whoa, dude. Avatar's power deceives humans, making them believe the altered person has always looked that way. Axum returned to his original appearance if he gets too excited or loses consciousness. What does gets too excited mean? This I do not understand. Avatar's power also enables Nox to detect the existence of others using her power across different worlds. Oh no. Alright. Cool. Well, I kind of wanted to be Noctis, you know. That's the news. All oh, right, yeah, this is how you get some of the special things, like special outfits for Avatara. We're going back to Noctis. Thank you. If I could get, like, Noctis's face and then just have Noctis's body or head on someone else's body, I'd be okay with that. Hey, Chocobo. But I don't like playing... A game where there's a, a canon protagonist appearance and then changing that appearance. Like two different characters. I don't mind like swapping clothes and hairstyles maybe. Although I usually don't swap hairstyles if there's a canon one either. Just feels odd to me. Like can you imagine Noctis' voice coming out of someone that doesn't look like Noctis? It's messed up. Look at all that. I bet uh, Cartanica was supposed to be an explorable region at some point. It's pretty clear, I think, that the end of the game had to be cut down in order to meet 
the development timelines. Which is really sad. I don't get mad about it, because at the end of the day, getting mad about it is not going to do anything. Besides get me mad, and who wants to be mad? And also, just like, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Still disappointing, though. I'm not trying to downplay that. But I'd rather enjoy what is there than not enjoy what's not there. And I don't mean that as in it's better to have nothing because I might not dislike it. Or I might dislike it, I mean that. I'd rather not worry about and fantasize about things being great that aren't there when I could just enjoy the things that are there. Because inevitably, you're just going to get mad. You're just going to be like, oh my god, this game could have been so good if this, this, and this was in there. And then it could have been like, well, what if that stuff was in there and it was shit? Or like, who cares if it's not there? You're just making yourself like the game less. Fodina Castino. Quarry boasting the richest ore reserves in all of Niflheim. After the mines shut down, a variety of wild plants dug their roots into the rubble. Defying the natural terrain and gradually transforming the arid basin into a makeshift marshland. I wonder, because they say it was like some supernatural thing that made this tree appear. I wonder if it was the king's power. Or the oracle or someone raising this tree up to disrupt mining to protect the tomb. Although the quarry lies in imperial territory, the mines are said to house a royal tomb. Local legends say the oldest king in Eos is interred within, but many Cartanicans dismiss these claims as mere fabrications. Tall tales trumped up by Imperials trying to appropriate the legacy of Lucis for themselves. The truth about the tomb lies buried somewhere beneath this silt and soil. Some suppose the demon deterring mausoleum was erected as a sign of friendship between kingdom and empire in an age when the two nations enjoyed amicable relations. Scars of war are visible across the land, while symbols of peace are made and hidden from our sight. Hmm. So the fierce would have been, or fierce? No, warrior, sorry. The warrior would have been some kind of peace brokering king between the two? Or maybe it was his wish that he bridge relations between them. Also interesting to hear that the royal tombs themselves deter demons, because, you know, demons broke into one of the tombs and took their sword. <laughs> but I guess that may not have been a demon, and may have been, like, Arden or something. Okay. Yeah, no. What you got? Why not? More HP can't be the worst, right? Okay. That looks like plain food that I had on my trip to Japan. Although I didn't have chicken nuggets. Or a cookie. I had some kind of... Uh, oh, bloody hell, I forgot the name of it now. It's like a cold salad in uh, vinegar water. How you want to look at me, Gladio? No. Feeling a little bad about yourself, huh? Actually, wait. Does Gladio's head turn when I come near? It does. Oh, that's just a part of his animation, huh? Hey guys. I can't use my items here. I was going to take a picture. That sucks. Yeah, so it's somewhere in there. It's taken away my ability to use pictures. Okay, well, we'll run down here and see if we can't find ourselves another chocobo, because I think I've dawdled enough. But I 
bet there's going to be a chocobo over here. Show me a chocobo. Actually, why the hell is this train station so bloody long? Like, there's nothing here. Is it literally just to for the consistency of geometry because the train's really big? I guess it would have to be, right? Because there's literally no reason to make a model this bloody big if you don't have to. Although, on the other, other hand, it's pretty trivial to make a flat surface as long as you want. Wait, I could sprint in the train, but I can't sprint out here? What is this garbage? Alright, back to hopping our way. Because it is slightly faster. At least as far as I remember. Where's the other chocobo? Hmm, maybe lower. Let's take us a look-see. That's the elevator. We already checked there. Remember when I first played this, I was confused, and I thought we had to come down here and not use the elevator. But no, the elevator is to progress. Let's see. Choco Bo, where are you? I found you. Also found a shaft. And four sneezes. Alright, let's turn our chocobos in and we can progress. I've never been here to get nighttime in Cartanica, actually, I don't think. Looks cool. Oh, there's cars. I think those are cars. Yeah. There's still people around here. And that must be the way to some place, or maybe it's just a long highway to Gralia or something. Let me uh, look the map here. Because they're going. What way are they going? It's facing the direction they're going. That way I get the thing in the map. So they're going that way. Are they going to the Castino? Interesting. Oh no, they're probably going around like this. Yeah, so they're going somewhere over here. Okay, interesting. Well, that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to know. Alright, lady, I did your blood money and got your chocobos. Have you seen my black Choco chick? Because that guy's pretty adorable. Alright, anywho. Let's progress. He comes even if he's saying no, so. Alright, dungeon time. Gotta be fun time, McGee. Odina Castino. Once rich in resources, this mine fell out of use in recent years, and now serves as little more than a watering hole for wild beasts. According to Kor, however, a royal tomb lies in the quarry's depths, waiting to be discovered. I remember this area was shown relatively early on, once uh, 15 got rebranded to 15. 
maybe not that early. It was probably like a year or so after that. Something like that. It was a really early look. And I want to say the part they showed isn't actually playable. Can't remember though. I'll try not. Huh, I thought there was an item here. I swear there was. How far back can I go, I wonder? I know the first time people do this dungeon, they always get mad because Gladio keeps yelling at them. And I didn't have that problem my first time because I accidentally went and did the area backwards because the area is designed as a circle, and so I went counterclockwise instead of clockwise, I think it is. And so glad it doesn't yell at you if you go backwards. It's really interesting the way they scripted that. So, for example, I have left Ignis so far behind, but Gladio ain't yell at me. Not that I mind too terribly. It's kind of the point that he'll yell at you at least a couple times. Come on, chop chop, pronto. Prompto. Get my N and my M's mixed up. Where the heck are you guys? I'm surprised Ignis is doing so well with the cane. He's certainly not used to it. Feels bad, man. Well, if you guys didn't get, if you guys didn't get stuck on geometry, we wouldn't be having this problem now, would we? Come on, homies. Prompto, what are you doing? But we'll walk for a little bit. Give you a sense of how slow this game actually wants you to do this dungeon. Although I think you walking is still too fast for this game. For this section anyway. We're going to find out I suppose. Can I jump down here? I can't. Well, glad it's going to yell at me and I don't care. Because I want these scales. Wait, is I saw an item there. Give me that. No. How dare you block me off. I will return. Okay, anyway. Hello, horrible, disgusting lake. It's really dark. Probably should have come here at night. There's demons afoot. Probably. Might not be. We could be fine. You never know. So yeah, I went up there first. You're not supposed to be up there first. Oh yeah. Uh, quests. Castino on camera. I know more or less where to go, so we're gonna go ahead and not track the main quest for this. Oh. I got a feeling this is a switch that activates that big hunk of junk. Doesn't look like anyone has tried to use it though. Alright, moving on. I thought there was a fight there. In fact, I'm pretty sure there was a fight there. Even it's not used to being needed to be babied. I don't know that I've ever walked on that uh, branch before. And of course my element is full. Well, in that case, Time to do some elemancy. Make a sick ass fire spell. 
What have we got to make? How about... Quadcast will do it. Yeah, just burn it all. Who cares? Can't waste a good fire element. That wasn't a lot, though, <laughs> actually. Oh well. What is up here? We can get that item I couldn't get before. At least I think. One could hope. No? What is this? Where does this take me? I literally do not remember a single thing about this one spot right here. This is way low. Isn't this like halfway through the dungeon already? Feels like it is. Well, whatever. We are getting that photo spot. I think when I... Oh, this is where I get the item. I think when I go back and do the Final Fantasy XV Ultimate playthrough, I'm going to skip doing this quest. Breaks the flow of the dungeon. Probably also going to skip the Chocobo Ladies quest. Yeah, probably going to do that. And by do that, I mean not do the thing. Subjects in sentences swap hard. What machine? A broken machine. Do you guys see a broken machine? Oh, that thing. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, come on. I can't tell you how many times I've said, ah, oh, come on, in my day to day life, and then realized that Gears of War exists, and then repeated it again in the Marcus voice. So many times. And it happens, like, with surprising regularity, actually. Alright, well, anyway, back to the dungeon. Oh, you can. This is just... Does this place not count as a dungeon? Because you can't free warp in dungeons. Interesting. Well, in that case, quests. Oh, there is a camping spot up ahead. Forgot about that, so we can still do this. Once I find where the camping spot actually is, at least. Need a key. Always need a key. They said this place was mineral rich. I think they're lying. Did something break? This is what I was thinking of when I said that just now. I thought that was over here. Hence my complaint. Do I have to talk to it now to get the key prompt? No, they meant over here. This is kind of confusing. I'm gonna say no. The answer is probably no. What are you shopping for? A knob. Let's see here. It gets a power failure, you stock up generators. Just give me a second. Mm. 
Ah, there we go. Nice. The power of thunder. Smoke it. Where is Iggy? Watching Iggy fight makes me sad every single time. He's trying so hard, but he just keeps falling over. He doesn't do any damage. It's just so sad, man. Man, that hurts. I know it's coming and it still hurts. <sighs> it's because he's. Ignis doesn't want to be useless. He's lived his whole life being like. Nox's lifeline, pretty much. This is all that he's trained and prepared for his entire life was to be the perfect asset to Noctis. And now he can't. And he's trying so hard. And no one knows how to tell him that it's not working out. And it hurts me. It really hurts me. Get out of here. Whoa. Okay. Ooh. Well, why don't we just smite this guy? What we got, Rama? Yeah. Later, dude. That Carlos took a few hits. That's kind of scary. I mean, he died eventually, but... You know. Still terrifying. Crabs are terrifying. Anywho. As I was saying... There's, there are people, or have been people in my life, in a similar fashion, have like become a burden and not wanted to be a burden. And they would ask me, like, am I in, not, not literally like, am I in the way, but basically they would ask me, are they bringing others down? And no one's got the heart to tell them they are. I didn't have the heart to tell them they were. Mostly because they weren't in a position like Ignis where uh, their hardship was permanent. So, like, why bring them down when you can give them hope that they'll get better? Because they probably will. Where did that... What? Oh, the game crashed. That's 